So we got Jake Paul versus Tommy Fury taking place this Sunday in Saudi Arabia. A pair of novices, yes, but probably the two most high profile novices in the sport of boxing. And there's nothing wrong with a fight between a pair of novices. These guys, on paper at least, seem evenly matched. Neither one of them has fought anybody of note as a pro or even as an amateur. Tommy Fury had apparently about 10 or 11 amateur fights. Jake Paul, I think, had one. Wasn't that against KSI's brother? You guys correct me if I'm wrong. And as a pro, Jake Paul's 6-0 with four KOs. Tommy Fury is 8-0 with four KOs as well. Now, the most notable name on Jake Paul's record is Anderson Silva, who of course was an MMA UFC legend very early on in his professional life. He had a professional boxing match, Anderson Silva, lost in the first round there, which isn't good form. Then he had a boxing match in 2005, which he did win. That was also in Brazil in the second round. And then his next one was by the end of his MMA career, where he beat Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. He beat Tito Ortiz. And then he lost to Jake Paul. So that is Jake Paul's best win to date was Anderson Silva. And to be fair, even though Silva was an old man, even though Silva didn't have a great boxing record from back in the days, he has the best skills, boxing skills that is, of any MMA fighter I've seen personally, Anderson Silva. And his boxing skills may have improved during his MMA career. Now, maybe it's unfair to judge him just on those few boxing matches he had way back in the days. So in any event, that's Jake Paul's best win. Tommy Fury's best win. Who would it be? Um... Would it be this guy that he fought in his last fight? I'm not going to try and pronounce the name here. Is it? Let me not even try. Could be that guy who he went the distance with over six. Anthony Taylor, the former MMA fighter. He seems tough, but he's no great shakes, is he? He's lost three out of his five professional boxing matches. And he also fought a guy called Jordan Grant, did Tommy Fury, a few fights ago. Jordan Grant is currently six and two, zero KOs. He is from Scotland. He was stopped last year by a guy called John Doherty in two rounds with a body shot. But he went the distance with Tommy Fury back in 2021. He lost that fight on points. He seemed game. And that's the reason I say this might be one of Tommy Fury's better opponents because he was at least game. He wasn't a knockover job in the sense that he didn't try and win. He did try and win Jordan Grant. So did Anthony Taylor. I can't remember this guy here. Was this the guy? Didn't Tommy Fury fight some kind of exhibition or something most recently? I'm not sure I actually saw this fight. Anyway, neither him nor Jake Paul have anyone great on their records. Hence, me saying they're relatively evenly matched on paper. It remains to be seen what takes place in that ring. Now, there's a lot of people saying that Jake Paul, or at least his team, wouldn't have taken this fight unless they saw something because they've really pursued Tommy Fury for, what, at least a year, two years, something like that. For them to do that, many believe that they've seen a number of weaknesses, perhaps, in Tommy Fury. There's been rumors over the past year, and that's all they are, they're rumors. I haven't seen any evidence for any of this stuff. But there's been rumors circulating about Tommy Fury getting knocked out in sparring or at least dropped in sparring on multiple occasions. Is this something that Team Paul have heard? Is this one of the reasons they've been pursuing Tommy Fury? If you look at the fighters physically, Jake Paul, according to BoxRec, stands at six foot one inches tall. Tommy Fury is six foot bang on. Jake Paul is listed as having a 76 inch reach, which is a pretty decent reach for someone of that height. With Tommy Fury, his reach is not listed, but he looks as though he has longer arms than Jake Paul. He looks like he has extremely long arms, Tommy Fury. Will that be a factor in this fight? Will he be the guy who dominates things at long range and is able to control things with his jab and what have you and make it difficult for Jake Paul to walk him onto shots? Because that's what Jake Paul tends to like to do is walk people onto punches. I mean, with Tyron Woodley in the rematch, he knocked him out. Did he walk him onto it? I think he kind of did. Certainly Anderson Silva, that knockdown that happened in their fight, he walked him onto it. Ben Askren, I can't remember about that one, but Nate Robinson was definitely walked onto a shot. So 
He likes to walk guys onto his punches. When you're fighting someone with longer arms than you who knows how to use those long arms, it's difficult to walk them onto shots because their shots are reaching, landing before yours, you know, in exchanges or as they come forward. So, yeah, that could be a problem for the problem child, as he calls himself, Jake Paul. We'll have to wait and see. We've got Tommy Fury being told by his dad and his brother that if he doesn't beat Jake Paul, he can stay in Saudi. <laughs> so, uh, no pressure. And for Tommy Fury himself, he's been saying that he's a real boxer. Jake Paul's not a real boxer and that he's going to knock him out and stop him and do all this stuff to him. So the way that it looks with regards to pressure, Tommy Fury might have a bit more on him because he is the quote unquote real boxer who comes from a boxing family and all that kind of thing and all the stuff his dad and his brother have been saying. Whereas with Jake Paul, of course there's still pressure because he's the bigger celebrity, right? He's supposed to be the A-side. So it's going to be interesting to see how this one plays out. Hopefully it won't be a stalemate because normally when you get two guys at this stage of their career facing off against each other, guys who have a lot to prove, chips on their shoulders, it normally results in a spirited contest, a good fight. But here it's an unusual situation in the sense that, yeah, it's two novices, but it's two novices with a lot to lose. And normally when you've got two fighters with a lot to lose, you know, who are already making good money, that can impact the way the fight plays out. It could maybe be a bit more cautious than you would like the fight to be. But at the end of the day, it is still two young guys and the red mist can descend. And when that happens, you get fireworks, you get mistakes, and that results in big punches landing. Let's hope that that's what we get here with regards to this fight. So let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Jake Paul versus Tommy Fury. I know there are going to be some people moaning. Boxing fans love to moan. Oh, this just shows how terrible boxing is because we're talking about a fight between these two novices, a, a pair of social media stars, rather than real boxing. There's no real boxing on. Well, let me just disprove that right away. Now, when it comes to MMA, and look, I've got the utmost respect for MMA fighters. I think MMA is a great sport. It's not my primary sport. I watch it now and then. Boxing is my main sport, okay? And I can tell you certain things about boxing in relation to MMA. So with the UFC, yeah, they put shows on all the time. This leads to the perception, and it's a very, very false perception, that there's actually more MMA going on, more UFC fights going on than boxing. I mean, nothing could be further from the truth. There is way more boxing than there is MMA, <laughs> and specifically UFC every week. It's just that it's spread out all over the world under multiple different promotional companies, and the core boxing audience in places like the UK, the US, haven't heard of fighters from other parts of the world. So I'm just going to show you here how many fights are on this week alone. This is how many shows are on in boxing. So there you go. Bulgaria, we got Russia, we got Thailand, we got the US. And this is just through the week, right? We're, we're up to Wednesday. <laughs> Look how many shows already. All right, we got Azerbaijan, we got the US, got a DAZN show on a Thursday. Another show in the US on Thursday. This is, what is that, New Zealand, Australia? I forget which flag is which now. Uh, Bangladesh with a boxing sh show there. Colombia, Dominican Republic. Several shows in Germany on Friday. Another show there. Italy putting on shows. Poland, Tanzania. They put on quite a lot of boxing shows actually in Tanzania. They got a show on Friday. Show in the UK on Friday in Bournemouth. And this is just during the week, right? Another show in the UK on Friday. More shows on Friday in the UK. Quite a few, as you saw there. In the UK alone on Friday. We've got Rigando taking on Jesus Martinez on Friday in the US. On one show there. Another show, another show, another show, another show. I mean, how many fighters have we been through at the moment? How many fights? Probably a hundred or more already. And we're only at the Friday. <laughs> right? And yeah, some of them are going to be prospects having their debuts and all that kind of thing. But some of them are going to be good fights, competitive fights. Oh yeah, but look at this guy. He's got four or five losses. Well, how many losses have the UFC fighters got? <laughs> Come on. The way UFC have packaged their content is very, very good and it's very, very clever. It's to make all of their content look like it's premium, but it's not. When I say premium, I mean absolute elite cream of the crop, top of the top fighters, yeah? That's how they've packaged it. But if you took 
If you cherry pick the best fights, the best matchups out of all these boxing shows and put them under one promotional house every week, you'd have probably three, four, five times more good competitive fights than UFC. It's just that boxing isn't under one roof promotionally, is it? So it's all spread across different countries and different promotional outfits. So here we are on Saturday. We've got shows in Argentina, shows in Australia. I'm not even sure, <laughs> sure where that flag is. Canada, Colombia. Is that Switzerland? France has got shows on. We haven't even reached Jake Paul versus Toby Fury yet. All right, France has got more shows on here. Germany's got a bunch of shows this Saturday. You look at all that. Loads of shows in Germany on Saturday. Ghana, of course, which is a good boxing nation and great boxing nation in Africa. Argentina. Oh, excuse me. Guatemala, not Argentina. That's Guatemala. Flag looks similar. Japan's got a show on. Okay, and more shows here. David Allen. Is that the David Allen? Huh? Where's this? Malta. Is Dave Allen fighting in Malta? <laughs> I had no idea. Yeah, it's the Dave Allen. Wow, okay. That's random. Dennis Hobson is doing a show in Malta that Dave Allen is fighting on. So I'm not sure if that's going to be televised. Maybe it'll be on YouTube afterwards. Anyway, Mexico, of course, a great boxing nation. They've got multiple shows on Saturday. Look how many shows. Scrolling through just Mexico alone, how many shows they've got on. And believe you me, there are going to be some good fights on the Mexican shows, for sure. Even if they're relatively low level, they're going to be good, competitive, tough scraps on some of these Mexican shows. So loads of shows on, in uh, Mexico on Saturday. Philippines, <laughs> got a show on Saturday. Spain, Tanzania, again, couple shows on Saturday. You can see there, Thailand. Then we get to the UK. And again, this is all this Saturday. <laughs> I mean, how many shows is there? Have we scrolled through a hundred or more? Yeah, shows here in the UK on Saturday, Doncaster Dome. You would have thought that Dave Allen would be on this one, right? The Doncaster Dome show. But no, he's fighting in Malta, apparently. Then US, they've got a show here. They've got, okay, CBS Sports Network has got a show, Antonio Vargas. This is uh, Banquez. That's a bantamweight fight. They've got a show there. Um... Terran Farmer's fighting on another U.S. show this Saturday. Another U.S. show here. Another U.S. show here. Another U.S. show. This one is on Showtime. And this is Matias versus Ponce or Ponce. I'm not sure how you want to pronounce that. This is the guy, I think, who... Yeah, he stopped Lewis Ritson, isn't it? Yeah. This is the guy who stopped Lewis Ritson. Where is it? Back in 2021 in the 10th round. Yeah, so he is taking on Matthias, who is a Puerto Rican fighter. And that should actually be a good scrap between Matthias and Ponce. So watch out for that one on Showtime. So we move on from that. All right, plenty of U.S. shows to China, to Italy, Japan. And now finally we're on the Sunday. So Japan's got a few shows on the Sunday, a couple shows. The Philippines got a show on Sunday. I have to move to page five to finally get to the Jake Paul, Tommy Fury card. And is that going to be top of the bill or is the Ilunga Makabu Badu Jack fight officially top of the bill? I have to imagine it's the latter, but who knows? This is a more high profile fight between Jake Paul and Tommy Fury than the top of the bill is. But the top of the bill is a real fight, quote unquote, and it's a world title fight. I'm a little concerned for Ilunga Makabu in this fight, not because of the threat that Badu Jack poses in the ring, but because of potential issues with officiating. Because last time Badu Jack got, let's just say, favorable treatment from the officials, like really favorable treatment from the officials last time he fought in the Middle East. Will that be the case here with Ilunga Makabu? Maybe he needs to stop Badu Jack because if he allows it to go the distance, he might be leaving the door open for something really horrific by way of officiating. So I'm kind of uh, concerned about that one there. Let's hope we get something fair. But as I say, top of the bill, or at least the most high profile fight on the card, if it's not officially top of the bill, will be Jake Paul versus Tommy Fury. I'm very much looking forward to that one. 
Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. And, you know, just for the sake of completing this week's boxing schedule here on BoxRec, another show in Tanzania on the Sunday. You got uh, Thailand there. Got another show there somewhere in Eastern Europe, I believe. And then that finally brings us through to next week. So, yeah, loads and loads and loads and loads and loads and loads of boxing shows on this week, as there is every week. It's just that it's not all in one country. It's not all under one promotional outfit. And therefore, most of us aren't familiar with a lot of these fighters. Doesn't mean there isn't good fights taking place everywhere. You get my point? Anyway, leave your thoughts in the comment section below. Are you sick and tired of the mainstream mindset? Does the dogmatic conformity and pathological ignorance have you tearing your hair out in frustration? Then don't be alone. Come and join our brotherhood on Patreon. We stand as a beacon of reason against an army of insanity. You'll gain access to my weekly topical podcast where we take more deep dives than Jacques Cousteau on an endless variety of subjects. There's also videos, interviews, live Q&As, as well as a vast back catalogue of previous episodes, including my popular Confessions of a Nightclub Bouncer series. You can listen via the Patreon app or download in high-quality MP3. Connect with myself and hundreds of other members in our Element chat group. There's no contract, no commitment, you can cancel at any time, and it's cheaper than a Mickey D's McMuffin. Just head to my Patreon page via the link below this video and select the tier called The Brotherhood of Reason. I'll see you over there.